in the sepia-tinged corridors of nostalgia, where moments of the past dance with the present, there lies a timeless treasure that once flickered on the screens of yesteryears, a gem known as the 1971 TV series Canon. Do you remember that moment, dear reader? The first encounter, the first chord struck by the resonant theme, the anticipation that swelled as you settled into your seat. Perhaps it was a crackling TV set, a bowl of popcorn, or the rustling of a cozy blanket, a trifecta of comfort as you embarked on a journey into the world of Frank Cannon. Ah, Frank Cannon, a portly private investigator, a beacon of unflinching determination, and an unlikely hero who sidestepped the conventional norms of what a leading man should be. As the scenes unfolded, did you find yourself enthralled by his charismatic quips, his steadfast resolve, or his undeniable knack for unraveling mysteries? Perhaps it was the moments when the narrative took unexpected turns, when you leaned closer, utterly engaged, letting the suspense wash over you like a fine mist. Those evenings spent with Cannon were just ordinary nights in front of the television. They were interludes of intrigue, moments where reality blurred, and you found yourself engrossed in a world where danger lurked around every corner, and justice was a quest worth chasing. Was there a particular episode that left an indelible mark on your memory? A twist, a revelation, a showdown that made your heart race and your mind whirl. But now, let us peel back the curtain and journey into the realm of the unknown, into the captivating abyss of random facts about canon. Beyond the screen, beyond the stories, there exist snippets of history, anecdotes that breathe life into the show's creation and legacy. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to the cultural impact that rippled through time, these tidbits weave a richer tapestry around the series that once held you captive. So, my fellow explorer of the past, are you ready to uncover the hidden layers, the forgotten details, and the intriguing secrets that make canon more than just a show? Let's embark on this journey of discovery, piecing together the mosaic of its influence, its quirks, and its significance, one revelation at a time. And there you have it, a portal into the world of canon, where mystery and nostalgia intertwine. So, without further ado, let's delve into the enigmatic maze of facts, shall we? For in the realm of classic TV, there's always more than meets the eye. Blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville, a timeless companion in canon amid the gritty streets, and relentless pursuit of justice in the 1971 TV series canon. One steadfast companion always stood out, albeit silently. If you've ever found yourself drawn to the background details, you might have noticed a recurring presence. A blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville with a pristine white top. Unassumingly parked near Cannon's car, outside a home, or casually by the street, this automobile became more than just a prop. It turned into a fixture of the show's aesthetic. As Frank Cannon, the titular character played by William Conrad, dived headfirst into solving intricate mysteries each week, his trusty Cadillac stood as a beacon of style and sophistication. The juxtaposition of the imposing machine against the urban landscape seemed to mirror Cannon's own unwavering commitment to unearthing the truth. The subtle consistency of its appearances lent an air of familiarity and comfort, inviting viewers to share in the exploits of this larger-than-life private investigator. But while the car's role might have been secondary, it was far from incidental. Its strategic placements were intentional, offering a visual link to the man behind the wheel. In the world of television, where every element is meticulously curated to enhance storytelling, the Cadillac Coupe de Ville was more than a vehicle, it was an extension of Cannon's character. Beyond its mere presence, the blue Cadillac carried a quiet symbolism. It represented stability in the face of chaos, much like Cannon himself. Whether parked near his ostentatious residence or subtly nestled on the sidelines, it underscored the show's commitment to crafting a comprehensive universe. A universe where even the background elements held purpose. So, next time you delve into the captivating enigmas of canon, spare a thought for the unassuming blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville. A timeless companion that never sought the limelight, yet enriched the narrative in ways only a well-placed detail could achieve. Unveiling the sartorial secret of 1971 TV series canon in the annals of classic television, the 1971 series canon stands as an emblem of crime-solving prowess and rugged charm. William Conrad's portrayal of the rotund private investigator Frank Cannon captured the hearts of viewers, but it's not just the mysteries that pique curiosity. A little-known fact adds intrigue to Cannon's escapades, his signature coral short-sleeved shirt. 
Week after week, Conrad's cannon flaunted a singular coral shirt, a hue straddling the boundary between red and orange. This sartorial quirk wasn't mere coincidence. It was a conscious choice that embodied practicality and saved on wardrobe expenses. In a sea of rotating costumes, the coral shirt and its equally vibrant blue counterpart became the investigator's unmistakable trademarks. The simplicity of his attire allowed audiences to easily spot Cannon's unmistakable style, cementing the character's visual identity. Yet, beyond the coral-colored curtain, the show's legacy intertwined with a tale of distribution and continuity. Viacom, the long-standing distributor of Canon, would later reunite with William Conrad for yet another successful venture. The result, Jake and the Fat Man, a five-season spectacle that further solidified Conrad's place in television history. As we delve into the obscure trivia of canon, we uncover a mosaic of choices that define the show's aesthetic and legacy. From wardrobe efficiency to unexpected partnerships, the coral shirt stood as an emblem of a character's consistency in an ever-evolving landscape. Such are the enigmatic threads that weave our memories of TV's golden era. In the realm of classic television, the 1971 series canon stands as a prominent example of gripping storytelling and unique character traits. While the show's longevity and popularity are evident, it's the peculiar habits of its titular character, Frank Cannon, that have intrigued viewers for decades. One standout quirk involves Cannon's choice of vehicular security, or rather, the lack thereof. Throughout the series, Frank Cannon's Lincoln serves as an extension of his persona, but not in the way one might expect. Rather than safeguarding his prized vehicle, Cannon boldly leaves his car parked with the windows fully rolled down and the doors unlocked, a decision that frequently courts trouble. This unconventional habit becomes a recurring motif, as nefarious figures take advantage of his lax approach to car security. The repercussions are twofold. First, Cannon's car becomes a frequent target for vandalism, leading to damage that ranges from minor annoyances to full-fledged destruction. Among the most prized targets is his car phone, a cutting-edge technology for its time that proves irresistible to the show's antagonists. This recurring theme adds a layer of suspense and humor to the series, showcasing the audacity of Cannon's foes and his unyielding determination to see justice served. Beyond the physical toll on his vehicle, Cannon's approach to car security underscores his steadfast dedication to his craft. It's a reflection of his unwavering commitment to pursuing the truth and his willingness to place his own comforts at risk in order to achieve his mission. This duality, the vulnerability of his car, and the unassailable strength of his character plays a subtle but powerful role in defining the essence of Frank Cannon. As the show progressed, Cannon demonstrated an evolution in its storytelling approach. The intriguing tidbit of the first season's unique episode previews, where a short scene preceded the opening credits, created a sense of anticipation for viewers. However, this strategy shifted in subsequent seasons, as the opening credits took precedence without offering a sneak peek into the upcoming episode's content. Furthermore, the musical composition of Cannon holds its own captivating charm. The main title and background music feature a distinct melody predominantly carried by the tuba and trombones. This melodic choice cleverly alludes to Frank Cannon's own robust physique, subtly weaving character details into the very fabric of the show's auditory landscape. The idiosyncrasies of Cannon extend beyond its compelling narrative, encompassing the quirks of its central character and the show's evolving approach to episode previews. This blend of character-driven storytelling and innovative presentation solidifies canon as a timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences. Through its distinct elements, the series leaves an indelible mark on television history, a testament to the creative ingenuity of its creators and the enduring appeal of its enigmatic protagonist. In the world of 1971 television, one show stood out, its presence as weighty as its titular character. Canon, the gripping crime drama that captivated audiences, left an indelible mark on the era's TV landscape. Amidst its many nuances, one recurring motif resonated unmistakably, a low, resonant wind instrument, possibly the tuba. This musical leitmotif, thoughtfully chosen, cleverly alluded to the titular character's portly frame and measured pace. Premiering with a roar in March 1971, Cannon embarked on its journey with an unforgettable pilot, a two-hour spectacle that dared to be different. 
Departing from the conventional opening graphics, the pilot introduced a unique visual identity, a stark departure from later episodes. This audacious move, accompanied by the absence of cast credits and a title voiceover, set the tone for Canon's distinctive approach, signaling its intention to break the mold. Among the show's recurring details, one particularly steadfast element was Frank Cannon's trusty Cannonmobile, a vehicle that bore its own intriguing secret. The license plate, most frequently 963 XUJ, underscored Cannon's identity as a private investigator, etching itself into the memory of ardent viewers. Yet, a curious variation emerged. An alternate plate, 825 DQI, made sporadic appearances, adding an enigmatic layer to the story. In the grand tapestry of television history, Canon remains an emblem of innovation and intrigue. From its sonorous musical motif to its bold pilot, the show's creators sculpted a narrative that defied convention, earning a place of honor in the annals of television legacy. A relic of a bygone era, Canon continues to evoke nostalgia and fascination, a testament to its enduring impact. Capturing the essence of 1,971 seconds television zeitgeist, Canon wielded storytelling devices that are still revered today. Its unwavering resonance reminds us that even in the fast-paced world of crime solving, some notes are best played slowly and deliberately. As we bid adieu to the captivating journey that is the 1971 TV series canon, let the echoes of each episode's intrigue linger in the corridors of your mind. Just as Frank Cannon navigated the labyrinthine mysteries, let your own memories intertwine with the enigmatic plots and the unmistakable charm of this timeless show. Recall the moments when your heart raced in sync with Cannon's pursuit of justice, as he peeled back the layers of deception and untangled the web of secrets. Those evenings spent perched on the edge of your seat, immersed in the suspenseful narrative, forged a connection that transcends time. The resonating tones of the theme music still reverberate, igniting a wave of nostalgia that carries you back to an era where stories were woven with a different kind of magic. Your personal memories and reflections hold the key to unlocking the cherished emotions that the series stirred within you. As the curtain falls on our discussion, I invite you to share your treasured recollections and insights about canon. Your thoughts, like pieces of a puzzle, contribute to the broader mosaic of appreciation for this remarkable show. Your unique perspective enriches the legacy of canon and creates a tapestry of shared experiences that will endure. Thank you for allowing me to delve into the world of canon with you. Your time and interest are deeply valued, and I eagerly anticipate the tales you have to share. Until our paths cross again in the realm of engaging discussions and cherished memories, keep the spirit of canon alive within you. Warm regards, your name.